All right, you're going to want to watch this episode, not just because it's a good episode, but because Mike Wright cannot be contained in this episode. Something very big has happened in the recent history, and we're going to observe his behavior and watch what he does. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, June 13th, the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, back with you yet again. Appreciate each and every one of you joining the show. Appreciate those of you with the courage to share this show with others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's very the, brave. The fortitude to uh, accept that challenge. It takes a couple of years, and I understand that. Because at first we're like, you know, a, a secret sauce. Like, oh. But then eventually you're like, have you tried this? <laughs> I like You ever that tried sauce. building a business around something nobody wants to tell anybody else about? <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> yeah, the FBI did. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if we were government funded, we'd be fine. Um, and then we would be spies. That'd be really cool. I would love like to the, not uh, be able to tell people what I do. <laughs> well, it's, like, it's like the story of the... Uh, uh, I mean, the well, when we tell people what we do right now, they assume it's a cover for being in the FBI. There's no way that they think there yeah, was, well, they that say, we're oh, fantasy so you're, un- you're So you're unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. You had the guy, well, Chuck Barris, like back in the 60s, was... Like involved with all these game shows, and then he like he was a FBI he, guy. Well, he claimed that he mm. he claimed he was a spy <laughs> for years and years mm. and years. Mm. I think eventually he said it was it was a lie. But <laughs> but, but how uh, can you trust that? Yeah, I don't know. That sounds like something who a spy who was no longer a spy would say. Uh well, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thanks for following the show. At least if you don't want to tell others what you can do. As you can click follow on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, um, help us out in the uh, in the ranks, the charts, and all that stuff. Leave us a review. We appreciate you. It's it's fun to have you on board. The Foot Clan is mighty and strong, and uh, we're excited to have you with us for another episode today. Quite a bit to talk about. Uh, I'll I'll try to just hold Mike back. We we actually bought a um, what do they call that? Uh, the horse. No. <laughs> We nope. bought a horse? I, I was excited. <laughs> I wasn't sure what we bought, but it seemed like it might have been a horse. It wasn't a horse, oh, okay. Jason. All right. I'm going to make a note, though. Uh, what we, else What else did you think we might have bought? Buy horse. Yeah. I mean, not that Mike wouldn't just ride around on a horse with the, the Madison news. <laughs> yeah. But I was just saying, like, uh, what do they put on people in the insane asylums? The uh, straight, straight jacket? That's it. Slightly different. Slightly different than a horse. <laughs> I we're gonna get into Madison and Dalvin Cook. <laughs> you were you were going to a straight jacket and Jason derailed it with yes, a horse yes, joke. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at. Um here's a heads up right here at the top, because we're gonna talk about news today. We're pre recording this show. So this episode, Thursday's episode, a little bit pre recorded. Um it's a vacation week with our families. So we're getting in here. We didn't want to miss any episodes. We wanted you to see our beautiful faces. Mm-hmm. But if big news breaks, uh, you're not going to get it to today. Well, I mean, thankfully, you know, one of the things broke. Yeah, this would that would have been bad to happen while you were gone, Mike. So um, we'll talk about that momentarily. We do have a special giveaway. We just gave away a signed Justin Jefferson jersey. We're giving away a signed Garrett Wilson jersey. And um, you can learn about how to enter over at FootClanGiveaway.com, doing something a little different. With this giveaway, have a chance to share uh, something that you love about the UDK, a story about using the UDK, or maybe telling tale of the championships that you've, you know, the trophies you've been carrying around due to uh, using it, and maybe kicking butt at draft at draft time. So, FootClanGiveaway.com for all the details. Uh, free to enter over there. Signed Garrett Wilson jersey. All right, before 
the news. Oh, come on. Brooks has a quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Put this quick question in the garbage. We got stuff do you want to, to do you want to skip no, it? No, I want to see Mike suffer. Hold. Hold. Go quick I, It question. was a simple one, Mike. You can answer okay. it as quickly as you want. Okay. Is there an offense out there that you think could make the largest points per game increase in 2023. Okay, the New Orleans Saints. Jason, go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, last year's biggest jumps were Jacksonville at number one, a nine-point difference from 2021 to 2022. Detroit was second, seven-and-a-half point difference. The Giants, six-point difference. Miami, 3.7. I actually was surprised that that was so low. Uh, Philadelphia, 3.6. So um, all teams that had great success making that jump Mike's team is the Saints. Yeah, so I, I'll talk about it real quick. There's, I think, some other, uh, you know, more likely teams that that these guys are going to talk about. But like, I'm I'm pretty excited here for the Saints. I think that I do believe Derek Carr is a big upgrade over Andy Dalton. Uh, as of now, which we've said this, I don't know how many years in a row, but as, as of now, Michael Thomas looks like he will be back, good to go. I am very, very bullish on Chris Olave taking another step. Hype train season, of course, but all camp news has been very, very positive about Chris Olave looking like he has leveled up already from from his fantastic rookie season, which was right next to Garrett Wilson in terms of, of production, but Olave did miss a few games. Uh, so just I, I think that they can take a step up. One, because the offense was so... Uh, it wasn't great last year. Putrid? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, word. I don't remember the exact numbers for them off the top of my head, but I think that they can be much, much better with this quarterback, with the with the wide receiver core and, and the weapons that they have available. So I'm, ex I'm excited to see what they can do. I'm not saying the Saints are taking the leap to win the division or anything like that with, with Dennis Allen at the helm, but – I think they are an offense that they is, were that could be being undervalued a bit in drafts right now. Fourth worst last year? Is, is that, that correct? what they were? I don't know. Uh they had a drop two points per game but between twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. Yeah. Um I'll they take, were they I'll, were under twenty points a game. I'll take the quick layup. It's the Jets. I mean, yeah. this is not a hard one to figure out. Twenty ninth in the NFL last year with seventeen point four points per game. Maybe shocking to some because they were competing in a lot of games. Their points per game went down last year compared to a very bad 2021 um, injuries to Brees Hall, quarterback problems. Garrett Wilson couldn't do it all despite being the offensive rookie of the year. So the Jets, it's low-hanging fruit, but Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, the return of Brees Hall, yeah, this is a team that should be in the top five in terms of points per game jump. Yeah, I, I, I think that this is probably – the odds on favorite for the largest jump this year because of everything you mentioned. I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. I think that, you know, you had Lamar Jackson lost last year, but in addition to that, Todd Monken coming over as the new OC, adding offensive weapons to the receiving game. I think this team is going to play faster. Uh, and, and just the fact that you go from an injured Lamar to a healthy Lamar, the Baltimore Ravens should, should be great. And I want to throw one other team out. I don't think they'll have the biggest jump necessarily but for fantasy purposes this is a team that almost for sure will have a significant jump they'll go from like 26th to you know middle of the pack and that's the uh, division mates of the Ravens the Pittsburgh Steelers I I believe Kenny Pickett will I, I believe he couldn't <laughs> repeat the the amount of oh, touchdowns don't thrown tell per Kenny pass Pickett what he can or cannot I mean do. it would be almost impossible for him to repeat that level uh, well, because he'd, he'd be percentage. benched, they it, wouldn't. I mean, they wouldn't let him get there. Exactly, you can't so, repeat it from the bench. Uh, they've made massive improvements to their offensive line, and I, for fantasy football purposes, I think that this is one of those teams that makes the biggest impact because they were bad last year. People were people were high on Deontay Johnson last year, high on Najee last year. They, you know, they and and they all disappointed. And so this year, they're, they're not being drafted high. They're being drafted thinking that well, the the Steelers are a bad offense. And I think they're going to be an average offense, so I, I see yeah, them I as mean, values. I will say uh, you were very anti-Deontay, and we were all yes. very anti-Najee last year. The, the departure of Big Ben was a was at least a uh, a sign that things might be yeah. troublesome. So, um, But you're right, it was it was as bad as it gets, so there's an opportunity there. 18.1 points per game. Not a good. Not good. All right, Mike. 
news and notes from around the league. Like I said, we're recording this early, so for us, this is breaking news. The Vikings have informed Alvin Cook of his impending release. Yes, so for for every opportunity, there is an opportunity cost. It would, Alvin Cook will be uh, moving on. He will be finding a, a new team. However, Kill! it's Alexander Madison time, baby. We made it, everybody. We made it. Oh, we made it. We're, we're, we're many years into this process. <laughs> We've been holding on. We've been holding on to the to our our underground champion, knowing that when he gets the opportunity, he comes through in a very, very big way. Now the opportunity is there. The writing was on the wall when they gave him the contract that had a decent amount of money for the running back position. He comes in. Uh, look at what they did last year with Dalvin Cook. He was a basically a workhorse running back. Uh, you saw Alexander Mad Madison's attempts dialed back this past year. Is that because... This is what the new coaching regime wants. You have O'Connell up there who came from the Sean McVay system, which McVay, when he has his guy, McVay is a one running back system as well. So I am very, very excited for what Alexander Madison can do. He can catch passes. Um, the like We've seen him essentially uh, start six games, and in those six games he has been truly a difference maker for the fantasy football running back position. And looking at the depth chart, it's like uh, we talked about it on the last last show that Ty Chandler probably in line to be the backup. They did draft uh, Dwayne McBride in the seventh round, who I like. I think that McBride is a very interesting uh, running back, but he was kind of hurt through the process. Small school, great production profile, but small school, so it, it will take – I think a lot uh, for him to come in and make some noise on the depth chart. So just looking at what they have right now, this team is moving forward. Madison is their guy. It's It now comes down to a question of what do you believe the talent level of Madison is? And that's where you should draft him because he's going to – he will skyrocket. If you haven't been drafting him with the, the, the rumor mill being really, really strong saying that Dalvin Cook won't be on this team, it's been an incredible discount in underdog tournaments because that's going – he'll shoot up fourth, maybe even the third round. So I will I will now cede the floor in my excitement to where you guys are because I'm, I'm at the top. I, I love Alexander Madison. I've loved him since he came into the league, and I think now with this opportunity, he's going to be a difference maker. I mean, I'm, I'm not there, but he's going to be much – I mean, he's, he's definitely a bargain in best ball where you would – been drafted had been yeah it was a bet last. it was a bet that you won um mike has him at 16 i, I wanted to look at this because we updated our rankings this morning with the news i got him at 26 jason at 23 i believe he slid right ahead of like samaj p ryan right now in my rankings at 26 uh my confidence in the talent of alexander madison is not maybe where mike's is I realize that he's been good when Cook has been gone. I, I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, you had uh, uh, five games with 20-plus rushing attempts for Alexander Madison. In those games, 112 rushing yards, 113, 90, 95, 112, never averaging fewer than 4.1 carries I, in any of those games. Yeah, and, and, and it, was, it was a lot of volume. Um, one thing I think is partially missed from that equation has been the you know it was a Zimmer team. This is year five for Madison. He's played in 59 football games. Um, he's had the last two years well, not well below, but, but 3.7, yeah, 3.8 yeah. a carry. I might look at him more like when Joyk Bell was thrust into a starting position. You know, it wasn't like we went into this offseason knowing that Alexander Madison was, you know, everybody believes he's the guy that's going to start for the Vikings. He's, he's the incumbent. He's the guy that's there. So do they bring another body in? It, I think it's possible. Sure. I think Madison fits more of the later RB2 realm with upside. Um, volume is tough. I think his, his career high in carries is 134. So when you, when you go from 134 to where I think I, – I have him at 220. I'm guessing Mike has him higher than that uh, carry-wise. I don't know where you put him, Jason. I got him at 243 right 243. now. 243. 224. Okay, so we're very similar in ranking and in, in, in workload. Can, can he be efficient enough on 220 carries? Can he score enough touchdowns? If he does – you know, then then we just found another another running back that's meaningful for fantasy. Yeah, I'm, uh, and that, I'm not trying to throw cold water. No, yeah. it's a huge victory for you in the um like you. This is the stock that you bought. 
like four and a half years ago. Yeah. And everyone's been like, this is not one to have on <laughs> yeah. in your portfolio. Look, and you're like, no, it's a whole. Kramer's been hitting sell, sell, sell yeah, for you, his You held it buttons. and you held it and you held it and you held it and you held it. And then this morning it got it got the, the hockey stick. Yeah. I mean, these things don't usually pan out and it did. So that's great. Alexander Madison is not as talented as Dalvin Cook, just period. So he's not going to be um, – he, he isn't going to be what Dalvin Cook was. He's, I don't see him as an RB1, but this is a good offense. This offense – this is a bad defense. This is a guy who's thrust into a role where you assume, even if it is a shared workload and it's not, you know, full true workhorse, because obviously Dalvin Cook was a was a true, you know, seventy yes. percent snap type player. Um, you know, if Alexander Madison is a sixty percent snap player, that's awesome. You want anyone, any NFL player at sixty percent as part of a good offense. That's going to be valuable for fantasy. I see him as a pretty solid running back too for fantasy purposes in that 13 to 24 range and uh it's really just a matter of where does his adp end up Let, if you're drafting a, now it'll be a slower climb let's play a game briefly what who's the bigger risk okay i'm gonna say it's madison or Okay. okay. This is Cause, just, cause just just risk. risk. Just risk. Okay. Just like uh, – because there's a bunch of players that you have a bet – you have to make a bet on at running back. We talked about him recently. Is Madison or Cam Akers a bigger risk? Akers. Akers. Okay. Is Alexander Madison or Rashad White a bigger risk? Rashad White. <sighs> White. Is J.K. Dobbins or Alexander Madison a bigger risk? Mm, Madison. Yep. David Montgomery or Alexander Madison? Who's the bigger risk? Montgomery. Madison, you okay. don't risk. I, I, that's a matter of what it costs. I just feel like it doesn't. You're not risking a lot on Aaron that. Jones or Alexander Madison. Who's the bigger risk? <sighs> that one. That one is close. super interesting. They're he back was, to back for me. He was the guy that I looked at in my rankings that I thought push comes to shove. Who do I think is going to be better this year, Aaron Jones or Alexander Madison? Obviously, going off of just risk, just saying for fantasy purposes. Uh, you know, I see him about that tier. You know, you've got question marks with out Aaron Rodgers for Aaron Jones, and you've got question marks about Alexander Madison, but they're both going to get a lot of work. And and, and the volume point is interesting, and I, I want to talk about Dalvin Cook's, uh, what, prognosis, I guess. But last year, Dalvin Cook was a pro bowler. He was over 1,100 yards on the ground. He it, joined, uh, uh, well, who's the Baltimore Ravens quarterback? Uh, Hunt, I can't think uh, of his name right now. Huntley? Is that who it was? It was Huntley. What Pro do you mean he joined him though? In the Pro Bowl. Oh, I see. Yeah. You, you, if you make the Pro Bowl, we're bringing. I'm, it up. I'm just. I'm. I'm just um, saying that Pro Bowl is not necessarily what it used. He to had be. touchdowns of 53, 81. Um, he had a 40 yard run. He had a 64 yard touchdown reception. Those are not areas that I believe Alexander Madison will. And be. I would. I would agree. So, so it, it, to me, it comes down to can. I think it's a it's a touched a little bit more of a touchdown gamble than people may want to recognize. Madison, I think four touchdowns, eight touchdowns, totally different season for I, Madison. I, I would agree with you on, on that, but if I had to bet whether or not Alexander Madison can succeed in the touchdown game, I think he will. He had five touchdowns last year. Sure, um, you know, on only seventy four carries, he's a two hundred and sixteen pound back that's big enough to be used around the goal line, and uh, like I said, good offense. And that was while Dalvin had eight rushing touchdowns. So yeah, I, I think that the the opportunity for you know, upside is is certainly there for Madison. And for me, it's touchdowns and what does the target share look like? Because Dalvin Cook, that was the lowest target share of Dalvin Cook's career. He was down at nine percent. So this it will will Madison see nine or ten percent of the targets, or will that he, could be more reflective of the the new offense that it, we yeah, got last year. That's what year. I'm saying. They added Addison. Added Addison. Nice. They added added Jordan Addison. Addison. But it's like. If, if there's a big difference if Madison sees six percent of the targets or closer to ten. That's that that would be a wide swing for his fantasy. And uh, simply because of uh, I want the sound rolling off my my tongue. Addison or Madison, Jason? Madison, Madison, Addison or Madison? Madison, Madison. I'll take. Uh, man, I love Addison. But I, do I, you want to add Addison or add Madison? I'll go Madison. <laughs> would you add Madison or? Uh, I think I would add Madison behind Madison. Uh, I would <laughs> add Addison <laughs> behind Madison. Right. Um. Okay. 
All right. Sure. Uh, and and I guess we can mention the name uh, uh, in Wang Wu, her, who was also there at Minnesota. So, like, Dwayne made, McBride was later, right? Seventh, yeah, he was a seventh, seventh rounder. Round. Yep. So, I'm just like, it sounds like it's going to be Ty Chandler. Um, speaking of, so now Col- Dalvin Cook ends up being, much like DeAndre Hopkins, um, a still talented, probably not at peak player hitting the open market. Uh, probably, you know, these players generally hit the market with an expectation of more money than they'll get. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause they believe, I mean, look, he's, he's 1100 plus yards. I think in like six straight years or something like that for cook. You have and to Hopkins have... believes he's the best in the game still too. So both of those players might not land where you think they should land. Like, you know, I know Dalvin cook would love to go to Buffalo. Sure. Go he play. wants to play with his brother. Um, Hopkins wanted to go to Buffalo. They're not interested in paying that kind of money. Uh, there, there are a ton of places that make sense. Miami's at the top of the list. The depth chart there, um, for it, for what they want to do, it's not impressive. Uh, the Broncos would be at the top of the list for me. Uh, well, I, yeah, I, I, sure. I'm in of of teams currently showing interest, but but yeah, you're talking about for fantasy purposes. No, not just for fantasy. I mean, for the, I, I think they need them. I think they could use them as a as a one year player. Um, you know, if their, their money is a problem. I'm with you on the. Sean Payton's running game with Dalvin Cook and the only competition being P. Ryan and, and Javante coming off of injury, I think that's his highest fantasy ceiling. A lot of people think Miami, though, because they believe he'll do he'll have the majority of the work. And, uh, and you know, that's probably true. You're probably going to get 60% Dalvin Cook if he lands in Miami and then some scat, some scatarooski from... Uh, is that a Devon A chain? Oh, I wasn't sure if you were doing a scat back or a poop joke. Uh, I leave those to you. <laughs> Just but yeah. there, but there are other places that that are interesting too. Is there any anybody else on the list? A wish list for yeah. Dalvin Cook? Dallas has been brought up. Yeah, I mean we're, we're Dallas. sitting there with the McCarthy wants to run the football and he's got Pollard dot 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 and Ronald Jones. Yeah, it's it's the the funny thing of fantasy football of everyone sitting who had believed in Madison made the the fantasy football investment to get him okay you're you, everything is, is the, like you said the hockey stick has now gone way up and now everyone else out in the NFL sits with their hands trembling just at least a little bit because you have no idea where Dalvin Cook is going to go I you have to imagine at some point over this offseason the Vikings went to him and said hey do you want to stay here Here's what we'll give you. Like you can take less money and stay here. And then Dalvin Cook likely said, "No, I'm I'm worth more money. I will bet on myself the same way that that Ezekiel Elliott did for the Dallas Cowboys, which that is currently a bet that is. Yeah, he might go back to that Dallas. Is, that is not not cashing out for Elliott. Hopkins, Zeke to a degree, certainly Dalvin Cook. These are fantasy football warheads about to be dropped onto yes. some backfield. Some some wide receiver room that are going to have massive implications. So, um, you know, whether we don't know as of this recording, if any of that's happened, uh, but when it happens, it'll be impactful and we'll talk about it. All right. We are going, I think that's it for news today. Yes. How you doing there? Judge doing great. Having a spectacular day. Oh yeah. You got any, you got any Madison back there, Brooksy? No, nah, I'm not having yeah. that. Yeah, only me. <laughs> the well, look, only one left. <laughs> look, look, before we move this on. This ship is empty. I, I'm going to tell you, if there's a guy in your league like Mike, <laughs> you trade him Alexander Madison today. Because that's it. You, the, you trade him. Sir, if there is a guy like me in your league, they already had Alexander Madison. Yeah. You cannot trade them now. <laughs> if you can trade Madison at his peak value, this is just a principle we bring up all the time. If you can trade him for what he hasn't proven, you don't lose the deal. Right. You you automatically win the deal. He either delivers to the level that you traded him at because somebody like Mike who somehow doesn't have him. It's impossible. Um, <laughs> impossible. Uh, it's your opportunity. To, to This will be my triumphant best third round rookie pick of all time. <laughs> it just took five years. <laughs> hey, hey. Michael Turner took some time as well, my friend. That's fair. Michael Turner has been used – as that example, he? for 9, 10, 15 years. And I'm using him again. There's only one. The only reason Michael Turner is the only one that's brought up like that. Yeah, but now we can Because he's the only one that's if, ever done it. If Madison does yeah. well, uh-huh. it, it who's who's Turner? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I mean, if you, uh, Mike's got so many years into this. All right, quick break. Back with the ADP price check. <sighs> it's been a good morning for me. Good Mike. times. It's been a good morning for Mike. All right, let's do it. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay, it's time. We're going to uh, play a little game of sorts while we break down uh, where certain players are going in drafts. We talked on the last episode about the value of ADP, the average draft position um, in your league, where players are moving, where they're going in mock drafts, in real drafts soon enough. And we're going to take a shot at guessing ADP for a number of players while we talk about them. Is that correct, Brooksy? Oh, yeah. Okay. That means yes. That, mm-hmm. That's another way to say yes. Um, <laughs> oh yes. I just I realized I said oh yeah earlier and it fell off brand. So no, I had, that's to, felt had to make up for it. I, I Kool Aid. That's a Kool Aid thing. <laughs> you don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to trample you'll, on that trademark. You'll be hearing from the Kool Aid Man very soon. <laughs> that's right. And he shows up through walls. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you better be careful. He's not. He's actually one of the best people at giving you the. Uh, oh, like the summons. The, the summons. You got served by There's the. There's nobody <laughs> better than the Kool Aid Man. To give you a summons. He doesn't just knock on you. He oh, guys, you just scared me so bad because I looked at the screen and I'm, I realized I'm sitting right wall. in front of a brick wall, and that is his favorite. Why did he goes through bricks more than anything else? I mean, it, it's just easy, I guess, to knock the shape out. It wasn't easy for out. the big bad wolf, but for him, it's easy. Well, because yeah. the wolf was he oh, puffed and he puffed. That's true. He didn't have a giant oh, boy. In, indestructible <laughs> shell. Um, uh, that's some strong glass it's, for what it's yeah, worth. Very tempered. Yeah. Uh, Christian, <laughs> did, did I get Owl to laugh on that one? You did. did yeah. A good tempered glass joke. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Nothing like a tempered glass joke. Uh, Christian Watson, wide receiver for the Packers. Responsible for one of the most ridiculous touchdown runs that we've seen in recent history in the middle of last year. He runs very fast. Where do you think he's yeah. going? Oh, we have him ranked right now. Jason's the highest at 24. Don't mind it. I'm at 35, Mike at 38. I, am, I don't like my ranking. I think it's too low. Um, I think he's – so I, I'm you're not sure exactly. you going to double down? Double? You're going to go You're gonna go on, on him over Dobbs? Watson? Oh. <laughs> I, I did not no. know where – that that's, is – Yeah, that's yeah. – Boston. <laughs> I had oh, no is that one. that one? Because we got other buttons. Yeah, the crickets. For that one, we got I that. Like that. That's got more that. appropriate. I forget uh, how early it is. Yeah, I mean, yes, I would rather have Christian Watson than Dobbs. Oh, the Dobbs is getting hype train again. Give uh, me the ADP. The what ADP. Do you think he is? Uh, so this is all redraft ADP. It's re- not best ball. Okay, where is, I think Christian Watson is, represents even a, a higher value. I think he's going to be right around where I have him ranked around the wide receiver twenty four, which should put him in that fourth round, late fourth Whoa, round. Whoa, that's spicy. I thought I was going to go. I'll go sixth round. I'll split the difference. I think late okay. fifth. I think late fifth. Um, he is wow. Okay, five eleven. Late there fifth. There we go. And that do, ironically, it does match up with the wide receiver number Jason was bringing up. Okay, so I was right on the wide receiver number, and you were right on the round that that would relate to. Mike, you're this round's biggest loser. Hmm. So five eleven hmm. is the wide receiver twenty three off the board right now. So that's where Watson is going. Uh, I don't mind that spot in drafts i mean you you're looking in the sixth round into the fifth round for some upside and you know talent generally wins out i don't want to overemphasize jordan love because aaron Rodgers had a bad season like this was not a great year from from aaron Rodgers. sure i mean a bad year for aaron Rodgers, but a bad year from aaron Rodgers. we like just this is just like uh um, Big you know, Ben. I was going to yeah, Big Ben Roethlisberger. We had a bad year from him, and it still gave us fantasy goodness from Deontay and Najee Harris. You go to Kenny Pickett, you're like, well, it certainly can't be worse. Oh yes, it can. Well, you, people shut down the the Seahawks though, and they shut down the wide receivers last year, right? I mean, Russell Wilson departed, and and these oh, guys, 80, the their draft. ADP yeah. was disgusting. Yes. It was revolting. But talent won out because yes. Gino was competent enough to to pull that off. And the the truth is, is I believe that the structure in Green Bay is solid. I mean, you have a a, a coach that's a proven winner. You have opportunities there, so I I don't mind. Like I have him ranked lower than 
Um, it's just how it ended up in the stats. But yeah, I, mean, I, I think the question about Christian Watson comes down to talent. It, it, you're right, talent wins out. But is he a DK Metcalf, uh, Tyler Lockett future talent? Yeah, or is he? Um, let me give you the best one, Gabriel Davis. <clears throat> Exactly. That's that's the other side. When I look at him, obviously he did not have a large college production profile, but he was playing for a team that was a run first team. He was a senior, went and dominated the senior bowl. Like he was the talk of the town at the senior bowl. And I remember um, buying in on his talent because of the people there in person who said that guy just blew people away. It was reminiscent of Cooper Cup, reminiscent of Debo Samuel, who did this, you know, they, they showed up to the senior bowl game. They were coming from programs where it was like they weren't as heralded, but then they just wowed everyone. So it makes me believe in his talent a little bit more when you had that experience and then he shows up in the NFL and runs away from guys and dominate so I I think I I bet on the um the side that says he is not Gabriel Davis the the five players in history rookie wide receivers with seven plus receiving touchdowns on fewer than 45 receptions Christian Watson at the top Martavis Bryant we remember that mm, that's, that's not one you sadly want to a good comp. Like. yeah Gabe Davis Martavis well, is a TBD um Anyways, well, we, we well no it's not no, to no, be not to be determined Sorry, I'm it saying, is a H -B -D it's, it's, it's been determined, has been determined. But I'm saying that Martavis Bryant was like if Martavis Bryant were in the league he right was now, lined by the off the field. He's yeah. a his, w in D was never determined. Yes, that's that's what I was trying. Um, to Gabe Davis is is the third on that list. Jahan Dotson, who we have okay. a lot of optimism for, and then Anthony Miller. It's not a great list. I mean, obviously Martavis Bryant, we 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 don't know because it's just of, a free. It's a wild stat. I yeah. mean, seven plus rece receiving touchdowns yeah, on forty five receptions. Um, all right, now, the second name is Miles Sanders. Um, guess his ADP. Right now we have him ranked very similarly. Jason's the highest at 12. I've got him at 15, Mike at 15. He's the guy in Carolina last year, fifth most rushing yards, fourth most red zone touches in Philly. I don't think that the connection of Miles Sanders, the fatigue of his name, the, the Carolina Panthers in general are going to be pushing this guy very high. I think he's going to be a value. So – ADP wise, where do you think he's at? I, I agree completely with you. I, I can't see him being higher than running back eighteen or so in mm -hmm. average draft price. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say running back eighteen for ADP, which I don't, uh, would that be fourth round if running backs are pushed up in redraft? I would think that would be fourth round, yeah. And I think that's where he is. That would be my guess as well, like four oh two. Okay, so but what running back do you think he is off the board right now? Uh, 17. I'll go 16. Okay. Okay. No You're, whammy. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Let's reveal. 5'10". Oh, running oh, back 22. Wow. Fantastic value. I think we were all trying to give him the depressed value, and it wasn't depressed yeah. enough. I'm going to make Brooks reveal these from now on. You cool doing that, Brooks? Yeah. I just feel like there's more suspense in that. Plus, he has to say something other than, Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's the cool. Yeah, that's and now we're in a Kool-Aid man hey, problem it's his again. Fault, not mine. Uh five ten <laughs> is a steal, I think. RB twenty two. You know, you look at Miles Sanders at RB twenty two in drafts and, and wherever Madison ends up, that'll be an interesting one. It's it a, will. Because I would much rather have Miles Sanders. Yeah, it's uh, it's ironic Christian Watson and Miles Sanders are are back to back. Yeah, uh, according to this ADP. I would rather have Miles Sanders there. Because I, there are very few guys that in the NFL could be workhorse running backs. I believe that they are bringing him in to use him that way. I think he will be, uh, you know, a, a sixty-five to seventy percent snap player. Uh, I really, really think he's one of the better values. I worry about the offense with a rookie quarterback starting week one. We've oh, talked that's about breaking news, by the way. Finally, Bryce Young is taking first round first snaps above Dalton. Oh, can you believe oh, that? Man, I can't. I Shocking. can't believe it. Yeah, but um, you know, he's going to start week one, and in the last decade or so, when you look at the quarterbacks who have started week one, their offenses haven't been great for the season, and their running backs haven't been usually great. I think only one example of you know a top twelve running back attached to those teams. So th there are some up. It's not all roses, which is why he's you know at the back of the fifth round, but. 
when I look at the 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 system, the coach, the money they gave him, the depth chart, what this offensive line did last year with uh, Deonta Foreman, and I, I think the opportunity is great for him. Anything to add on Miles Sanders, Mike? Uh, no, do I, you have fears of the quarterback situation? I do. Um, last year it was uh, what Baker Mayfield, Sam Baker? Sam Darnold, PJ Walker. Is that right? Oh man, I totally forgot. I know. I, <laughs> I, I listen, had deleted when that. I when I just said it out loud. I was expecting to be corrected. Is that I, that's right? Right? Yeah. Baker was a Panther. He was last traded year. there to that's start. Right. Yeah, because last off season we, there was all the. He's going to be better than Darnold. Yeah, it, we were on the DJ Moore. This will be so, the best quarterback he's played. I'm, I'm only bringing those names up because that was bad. <laughs> sure. The Mayfield, Darnold, P.J. Walker, and Frank Reich I have a lot of confidence in. So I, I do have some optimism around Miles Sanders and that I, offense being competent in a bad division. Yeah, I, I, I obviously I have some optimism. I have him ranked higher than that ADP. But yeah. I think that I think the risk on Miles Sanders is extremely high. We have – uh, you know, teams that have started a rookie quarterback week one average about four and a half wins, and that is uh, not the metric you want with running that, backs. That is not we a a winning team correlates high with a strong fantasy running back. I mean, that's no duh because teams that are winning then they end up running more at the end of the game, more opportunities for scoring. So that that does scare me a little bit. The when you look back, Deonta Foreman had some huge spike weeks. Like, absolutely crushed the Falcons. Had a couple more, I believe, as well. But he also had some games that were just, like, absolute duds. So I, I think that they're – if Miles Sanders doesn't get the workload that the money dictates he should, you're going to have a a busted draft pick. Do you – you have him ranked one spot ahead of Madison, I believe, right? If he's at 15 he, for you. If, and let me see. Let me double check I that. bet they're about the same spot. Uh yeah they're 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 very close as of right who, now. Yeah. Who would you rather have? I like as of today, I think I would take Madison. I think I would. Yeah, uh, bet on the offense. Yeah, ex yeah, and that's what it is. Is the, the Vikings are going to score a ton of points, and because Kirk Cousins will put up forty five hundred yards, close to thirty passing touchdowns, uh, and then it's like, well, how many points a game do the Panthers actually score? 20, do they hit the 20 mark? Hopefully. That's a good good uh, side to bet is on the offense. Uh, yep. Travis Etienne, Jacksonville running back. We've got to guess the ADP. Uh, we have him at 17, 19, and 21. I've mm -hmm. got him the highest. Um, oddly wasn't as used in the passing game. We brought this up. It's so strange. Uh, considering his capability there and the, and the connection with Trevor Lawrence. Um, you know, 5.1 a carry in the second half, nine per reception. You watched it. It was an eyeball thing. I mean, every time he took the handoff, he was shot out of a cannon. Um, dealt, although, with some, dealt with some injuries. Although there's also an eyeball thing with him, too, where I have never seen any running back <laughs> yeah. get exploded so many times. Yeah. He gets tackled where he – he just gets like ran into and he flies back five yards. I saw it like twenty times last the, year. Uh, the, the ragdoll physics is very high. What was the the, the joke I uh, that we made about him in the beginning of the, the work year? pony? Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> um, no, the work pony idea that be, because of that because he looks smaller than maybe he even is and and gets blown up. But you know what? That's like when the cars. You know, you've seen the accidents. You've seen the crash test dummies. You're going eighty. Yeah, that's a worse accident mm -hmm. than going than going forty. That is fair. Um, I think he's going to be very high in average draft position because of his explosive beginning. Yeah. To, I think RB 13 or 14. I'm, I'm going to go 12. I think okay. he cracks Ooh. into the RB 1 ADP. I'll go RB 15. Is this a third round pick to wait, you then? Wait, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Is, I think he's... I think 13. I'm going to go RB 13. I'm going to say that that becomes... Yeah, it's a, it's a, at the 2-3 turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go end of second. All right. 304, RB 13. Oh, very well done, Andrew. Uh, you know that the optimism around it—it's it, warranted. I mean, this is a team that is projected to win the division. We just talked about winning teams. He's—he's uh, he's by far the most talented back that they have. You guys have shared some concerns that were somewhat um, just—you know—the team came out and said they don't want him to take as much of the load as he was forced to last year, uh, and so they 
they may share some of that, but he's a, he's a highly efficient back. And he had, he had 220 carries last year, got a little banged up at the end. You'd love to see the receptions go up a little bit. He only scored five times to finish as the RB 17. So his range of outcomes, like he's not, he doesn't qualify as a, a wild card. Cause he doesn't have the like going to ruin you outcome. I don't think no, but he does have a wide range of outcomes for a player you're taking in the third round. Yeah, I mean, we all have him pretty significantly behind where his average draft position is, and it feels a little scary because when you have a super explosive athlete like he is, another year removed from his injury like he is, on an offense that projects to be better with an ascending quarterback, as is his situation, it's really tough to bet against that. But this coaching staff has a history of using uh, a, you know, a – Pretty big timeshare. Yes. Um, three backs, four backs in a the system. They've talked about doing that and lessening his load. And then they went and grabbed Tank Bigsby, who I believe is a pretty good running back. So um, maybe that Hasty opens back as well. Yeah. Maybe that opens things up for Travis Etienne to be hyper efficient because he certainly can be. But I, I see his volume. I, I, he's a guy that I haven't been able to draft almost at all because I think he's just going too high for where I think his medium outcome is. Yeah, I mean, I it, it's a tough one. I don't see it as a committee. I don't think either of you guys do either, right, in Jacksonville? Like well, when I, you look at com – like committee, I'm thinking, you know, you're talking Ramondre and Damian Harris from last year. You're talking about those situations. I don't see it as that a, kind of an outcome. I, I see like it Tank as – Bigsby on third down has to prove himself, and that is a – that is a tall task for the, for his previous performance in pass protection. It's it's not just third down. I think for for Bigsby with that draft capital, I think he'll get some a, a lot of first and second down as well. It's a, what round a, was he third? Uh, yeah, yes. he was a day two. Yeah, pick. So day two. Uh, I I mean a a platoon as far as like f, you know mid fifty percentile for for Travis Etienne. All right, Michael Pittman. Oh, man. Got any drops you want to slam, Mike? <sighs> I don't have that one. Oh, oh. Get me out of that. Yeah. Get me out hey. of that drop. Hey, wait, are we back? Why am I in the picture? Are we back on Pity City? No, you go back to Mike. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see what I got. No, that's everybody. Oh, hey, we're everybody. all in it. I think that's the wrong <laughs> drop, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's the one I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. Taking the new role of Alexander Madison and Mike's uh, rosters. What? No. What? The forever wait. Oh, yeah. Michael yes. Pittman will take that spot. Look, we have him ranked uh, probably too low. Probably too low. 36, 35, 40. I don't 40. know, man. Um, I, I think it is. I mean, 141 targets last year. Targets are a, 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 a an predictive earned stat, stat, an earned stat, and and you lose Paris Campbell, uh, and he's talented, and, and you have a better offensive uh, head well, coach, not, a better offensive head coach than what they had through last year. I don't necessarily think he's better than what they started with last year. It's no Saturday. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I know a lot of Mike's lack of confidence comes in Anthony Richardson. I have been taking my shots with Anthony Richardson in best ball drafts. Oh, that's I think that's fine. Um, and I he I, he may be my back in redraft, or I mean my quarterback in redraft. Just the way that like my roster and lack of draft picks may leave me to the yeah I go get, for that guy get the RG three season. But I totally get that. Um, this is the lowest receiving yards ever for a wide receiver with ninety nine receptions in a season ninety nine plus. It's the lowest fantasy production ever for a wide receiver with ninety nine plus receptions in a season. He had four touchdowns. He was under a thousand yards. Um, in three seasons, he's caught passes from Rivers, Wentz, Matt Ryan, Ellen Gajur, as we would yeah, say, yes. and Nick Foles. And now you get Anthony Richardson. Um, and 70% of the time, a rookie quarterback fails to support a top 36 wide receiver, which is why Mike would say maybe we that's, don't have him ranked too low. That is that is the statistic that has me the most shooketh and concerned for Michael Pittman because Anthony Richardson – like. He, a use the targets right incredible volume for Michael Pittman last year. What will this team be like at at the team level? What's the pace of play going to be? I will it be if you, a little bit slower? It it certainly could be. Now take a mobile quarterback into that situation where every drop back you have a chance that instead of actually unloading a target, Anthony Richardson 
the positive play for him might be run. Just pick up five here, and that's well, when you that's think, an opportunity that's gone for Michael Pittman. When you think of Lamar, you think of RG3, and you think of play action passing and the opportunities to take advantage of the rocket ship arm that Anthony Richardson has, you think of uh, what Pierre Garçon down the field, yes. Deshaun Jackson. It's Alec, Al Alec, it's Alec Pierce. Pierce here. Yeah, yeah. That, that was my point. Is that, like, it's not. I know Michael Pittman is capable of catching a downfield target. I'm not saying he's not. But Pierce is faster, and Pierce was brought in to do that. So I do, I do think that the fears are warranted. Where do you think he's going? Because I think he's going. I, I think higher. Yeah, I think he's like, going to go much higher. He's, he's still got a very recognizable name, um, and had a lot of stats last year. I'm, I'm going to say like wide receiver 24. Which, yeah, I was going to say 25. So I'm going to go early six six oh two. Okay, wide receiver 24. Yeah, 24 was the number off the top of my head. I think he's. I think he's still a fifth round pick. What do we got? But I guess. We just said Watson was what five eleven at twenty three. Yeah. All right, six oh three. Jason Brooksy, where is he? Wow, so close. Six oh one. Wide receiver, <gasps> twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah, that's two in a row on the that number. Is. Impressive. Um, yeah, it, and I, I, I do think that's too high. You look at a guy who last year got one hundred and forty one targets that's and not did not crack a thousand yards. And this was an offense last year that Deontay had Johnson's like giving him a high five. <laughs> <laughs> this is an offense last year that had 3,800 passing yards. I I personally have Anthony Richardson statted to play the entire season and finish with 2,800 passing yards. If if you know if it's a a number you, like your that, your market share would have to be outrageous. Yeah, your market share would have to be no a, no no expectation of a Cam Newton rookie season. No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think he throws for four thousand yards. He's not the passer that Cam Newton was coming out of college. Um, I, I could certainly see him developing into that. I actually think he's got a really nice pass. He can lay it up with touch. Um, he can hit it uh, small windows down the field. He can throw well on the run. I I believe Anthony Richardson develops into a good passer. Let me. Read I just you, don't think he's there. Let yet. me read who you're currently passing on. If you take Michael Pittman there. Okay. Jerry Judy. Ooh, I wouldn't do that. Mike Evans. Uh, More proven. Yeah. I, I Calvin can see Ridley. That you know I'm in. I'd probably take Ridley. Mike though. Williams. I'd take Mike Williams. Deontay. Yeah, Lockett. Oh, Hollywood. Lockett. Hollywood, yeah. You Kirk. haven't said a name yet. Ayuk. Kirk is the first Burks. one. Burks. Dotson. Yeah, I mean, most of these names I'm taking over. It, it over is Pittman. kind of like maybe it's a wide receiver dead zone for me, sure. where I want to wait for some some of those other names that uh, we're about to talk about. Jahan Dotson. I guess I just broke this game, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think he's going uh, about eight <laughs> spots behind Michael Pittman. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Whoopsies. Uh, maybe wide receiver thirty-seven, 37 and like the. Late eighth round, eight oh nine. This Brooks, is what? It, what? Uh, <laughs> what is it, Brooks? It is eight oh nine. Oh. Wide receiver, thirty seven. Oh, Jason, give yourself man. a round yeah, of applause. Thank that you. was thank uh, you. Very I'm impressive. <laughs> we do this full time. We're kind of the best at it. Um. Okay. So Jahan Dotson doesn't get the uh, suspense, but we all of them rank significantly higher than uh, that ADP. Wide receiver, thirty seven. I've got him at twenty. Uh, Jason. Dotson. Jason Dodson, at 28, here. Mike at 32. Thank you for recent hit Jurassic Park <laughs> reference. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we all like the talent. Uh, what, what we saw towards the end of last year when Jahan Dotson got back from his injury was a real consolidation of targets between him and Terry McLaurin. That's how I've projected this next season to be with – um, him taking another step forward. I mean, year two wide receivers are one of the best bets in fantasy football. They usually outperform what their ADP is on average, and the talent was was easily you know viewable with your eyeballs. So uh, there's not the the what you don't like about Jahan Dotson is the quarterback situation. That's I mean, where, that's what sucks. That was going to be my question for you as. Uh, the sole supporter of Sam Howell. How? I was gonna say on the show, but maybe uh, west of the Mississippi. We'll just we'll, we'll west go there. of his mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> and and but you like Jahan Dotson. So what do you want to happen? Do you want Jacoby Brissett to beat out Sam Howell and be the quarterback so you get 
maybe a little bit more clarity on Dotson and, and uh, McLaurin, or do you want to see Sam Howell, you know, Howell at the moon? Well, I mean, you know me. I want Sam Howell to win the job and be good. Like, that. that's my hope. He- he could goal. win the job. No, no, no. I, I said by both. By default. <laughs> I said both. I want him to win the job and be good. Be good enough to win the job, not by default. So um, it's, it's a tall task. It's really hard because you're going – like there's no young quarterback like Sam Hill that isn't going to have a bumpy mm-hmm. game here or there. And unfortunately, at least in my opinion, you guys can – I mean, also the opinion of the 12 quarterbacks that have played for Washington over five years, that you you can't really predict the, like, trigger finger for Ron Rivera. Like, sometimes it's like, you know, Taylor Heineke has a nice three quarters or a game, and it's like, this is our guy. Yeah, he's the and future. He's the You know, this is our guy. This is what I love about him. He's gritty. He's tough. He gets us wins. He throws it to Terry McLaurin all the time. And then it's like two two weeks later, it's like, no, nah, he's going to take a seat. It's We're going to go back to Carson Wentz. We've and, asked him to retire. And you want to know why? <laughs> You do that because you lose. Mm-hmm. You're playing Dallas twice. You're playing Philly twice. You're playing the Giants twice. Uh, That's I, six possible chances to switch your quarterback. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got Sam Howell not playing the entire season because the, there will be a, a switch made at some point. There, and, it's, and it's not really fair. If he was a first-round pick, if he was someone that they invested in, and this is why draft Correct. capital There'd matters be, be so to much. You know, he, he could have a, a bad first season here, and you just keep going. You keep plugging him in there but he was a fifth round pick as soon as they lose a couple games and he throws a couple picks and that will happen he's gonna get the he's gonna get the rug pulled out and maybe the strategy for Washington for once should be committing to a player no matter what yeah I mean look the the this whole idea of like we got to have competition in camp no matter what maybe the the new route could this. be giving Sam Hell a bit of a leash to to work. We just talked about developing players, right? I mean, yeah, but then on the other hand, you have people who want to maintain their jobs. Yep. And at the end of the season, what does the management look at? Does it go, "Okay, we have we we lost more than we won, but we feel like maybe we are developing this guy right here?" Or is it more important for the management to say, "Okay, you you had a 500 season. It was a tough draw with the quarterbacks we had. We'll give you one more chance. Yeah, it's fair. So, all that being said, John Dotson is a talent. He's very from good. from the time he returned. Same targets, same yardage. I think a better touchdown pace than McLaurin last year. They were neck and neck. So, uh, this is definitely one of those situations. You guys have brought it up with Metcalf and Lockett. Uh, you could bring it up with uh, AJ Brown and Devonta yeah, Smith. Yeah, and Devonta Smith. Um, if you're going to go in on one, I'm going in on Jahan Dotson. I'm not I, I think the unknown of his upside is more exciting to me, considering I believe his downside is almost the same as Terry McLaurin's floor, as long as these guys are healthy. Yeah, and, and that's not to say he he is probably the better value. That's not to say that you can't go in on Terry McLaurin or that Terry Correct. McLaurin's not better. You can go in on DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf can be better. You can go in on AJ Brown. AJ Brown can be better. That's right. But it's usually the second guy who has the better value for where you're drafting them if they're far enough. So sometimes, like Devonta Smith has been was like around. Yeah, he's like not that much cheaper. You see, Devon, uh, Debo Samuel came out and say that's he's, right. He's going to uh, he he bounce back from his quote awful season. It's nice to know yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I like that better than him coming out and being like, "I was awesome last year." What are you bad. talking about? Like, he, if he thinks that season was bad, that's great. He doesn't want to do that. All right, good guesses on Jahan Dotson, by the way. Thank you. All right, we're gonna wrap this one today. Like I said, we're recording this early, so we'll be back with any breaking news, talk through any of these new landing spots for certain players very soon. Thank you for joining us in FootClanGiveaway.com. If you want to win that jersey, goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.